Hello, welcome to Benchwarmers. We are at Brookings High School this week. Uh, Mike Nam from South Dakota State coming up. We'll talk with Angela Brown, the Avera Health trainer here at Brookings High School and joined first of all by the head football coach, Lee Schmidt. And practice hasn't started yet, but it's coming up. What are you guys, uh, what are you up to right now at this point in the summer? Well, right now it's just a strength and conditioning program. We run most of our camps uh, during the uh, June, month of June. We have our team camp yeah. at SDSU. And, we do our own camp. We do have some younger kids camps coming up. Our freshmen, we wait till the end of July to do that, so they're closer to the start of season, and we can get them off to a good start. Uh, we have our middle school camp at the end of the month, and then uh, we do our youth program camp. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of football to be done here before we start fall camp, yeah. but it's coming in a hurry. August 9th, I think, is the first August 9th day, of first day of practice. All right, and then this, the uh, season actually starts August 24th, first day of school here in Brookings as well, but you start out at Yankton, Mitchell, Spearfish. Talk about 11 AA this year. Who's going to emerge? Piers, the defending champions, but Peyton Zabel's gone. Do they take a hit? What's going to happen in 11 AA football? Well, I tell you what, Pier, Pier will still have a good football team. Uh, they have a, a good young coaching staff out there, and, and uh, they still have a lot of athletes. Um, last year, I think we saw four quarterbacks that they played, so they, they'll have, they, have, they have some kids coming. They'll be fine. Uh, Mitchell will have a good football team again. Harrisburg will have a good football team again. Uh, it seems like some of those teams are just, uh, you know, their athletes are just, uh, they're in that string right now where they have athletes year after year. And, uh, and I think they all have really good pro football programs as far as coaching staff and, and the stability of all that. Yeah. And that makes a difference. Right. Um, and we're hoping the Bobcats um, are much improved and, and uh, will compete at a much higher level. You, you said you came out of the SDSU team camp a few weeks ago and kind of found some some players that you didn't know you had, basically. Right? Not only we found some players, but we found a level of competing uh, and we found a level of toughness that uh, you know we've been working on and, and hoping. You know, we've been using that word grit a lot. Um, and after two seasons of, of uh, some struggles, uh, we think our kids have really kind of learned a lot of lessons, and uh, they've put a lot of heart and soul into becoming a much better uh, football team. All right. Um, Talk about the scheduling a little bit. We talked about you play Mitchell, Spearfish, Watertown, Pier, Washington. You don't go out west and play Douglas and Spearfish and Sturgis, those double-A teams that are in this class. But explain to people why that is that you don't play some of the teams in your, your own class. Well, in order to, to, you know, since we were all in double-A at one time, in order to keep a complete schedule for especially the triple-A schools, okay. they're, they're going to have to have some double-A schedule. Um, I think it's, in some ways it's also because some of the schools out west also play a uh, schedule outside of the AAA and AA. They play some A and B okay. schools out there too, which has been one of those things that's been a little bit, with the PowerPoint system, it's, <laughs> you know, we're playing, <laughs> we're playing Washington and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. and that's, a, that's uh, it should be some kind of bonus in there when you're playing schools that are bigger than you, but uh, right now the system isn't. Yeah, that that's way. always, will de be debated forever. It will be. It what will you be. get for playing a higher or lower class. But yes. And this 11 AA this year, uh, this will be the sixth year now that we've had seven classes of high school football in South Dakota. And yeah. a lot of people still think that's too many. But does that debate still rage all the time? Or is it pretty settled now that we have the classes we have? I think it's pretty settled. I, I think the toughest place for teams to be is to be at the, at the bottom of the enrollment yeah. of that AAA. That's, that's, you know, for the Aberdeens and Water Downs. Um, Brandon's been able to expand and, and actually compete very well at that level. Um, but, you know, and we might be in a few years too with larger, much larger classes coming up. Really? S coming through the middle school now and soon we'll be yeah. in the high school. Uh, you know, it could change our status of where we're at too, so we might be in that situation. It would help Sioux Falls build another school down there, <laughs> and, and I know that's, <laughs> yeah. that's in the works, that, you know, and, and alleviate some of their uh, enrollment, large enrollment numbers. Uh, right. That could help to some degree to, to balance things out a little All right. bit more. And you mentioned South Coast State right here in town. What kind of relationship do you have uh, with South Coast State? You obviously play your home football games at the SDSU Stadium. Do you guys like playing there? How's that work? Um, <laughs> we love the facility yeah. and we love the opportunity to be able to play up there. Um, but it's the only time that we're ever on that field. We don't, we don't get any pregame up there. We don't spend any more time on that field than our opponents do. Um, it is nice that we go to our summer camp up there. Uh, of course, our kids living here and going to games up there, they're familiar with the surroundings, but uh, uh, when you look at the Yankton facility, uh, just, just put new turf down and, there. And yeah. you look at Huron's facility, um, and uh, Pierre's done a lot of work on theirs, and those are all on-campus yeah, type facilities, yeah. you know. 
Uh, we would like to have out here uh, someday our own facility. Uh, when you s try to, even on a good season, when you try when you have a 20,000 seat uh, stadium, it doesn't it doesn't look like there's a yeah, lot of people yeah. there, even when you have an, a nice crowd there. So, uh, but um, still, uh, the you know the facility there to be able to play there is special. Um, there is a, a, a certain type of attraction, I guess, to be up there. Uh, it's just that with NCAA rules and all the things that go on and our, our lack of access sometimes to that place, gotcha. uh, it doesn't make it feel like a home field. All right. And I'm a little, little more red and black, which would be taboo up there. Uh, would <laughs> yeah, be right, nice. Right. All right. All right. First home game, August 31st, Mitchell uh, coming up for Brookings. They open the season August 24th. At Yankton, Lee Schmidt, the head football coach. Appreciate it, sir. Thanks, Tom. We'll see you this fall. Coming up next on Bench Warmers, Mike Dom from South Dakota State is in there. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers, presented by Avera Orthopedics. We're here at Brookings High School and joined by South Dakota State. All-American, Mike Dom, who is uh, back at South Dakota State. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, it's good to see What's you, What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. What are you doing this summer? Working out, working hard. Looks um, like it. Yeah, so it's just been a, a busy summer of staying in the gym a lot and, and uh, staying in the weight room. All right, lots to talk about. And, of course, everybody knows you declared for the NBA draft uh, in April, did not hire an agent, and came back eventually to South Dakota State, obviously. But what, what were you trying to find out when you declared? Uh, during that process, for me, it was just more of getting feedback from everyone in the front offices to what I needed to improve on, what they want to see from me in this upcoming year. Um, you know, for me, I knew I wasn't going to stay in the NBA draft um, this year. So coming back for me, the feedback I got was, was all great things, and uh, I took a lot of it in and was able to just absorb information and, and bring it back to SDSU here. All right, they would like to see you be leaner, faster, Play defense, yep. those three things. And the, what kind of diet are you on right now? You are, <laughs> you are cut. You've lost some weight since we saw you last I have, season. Yep. What are you doing with this? Are you on a crazy diet or what? Are you uh, doing? I went a little bit vegan. So really? yeah, I tried to cut out a lot of my meat and get more protein on plant-based items. Really? So yeah, for me it was it was different. It was a big change, but it all paid off. I was able to lose a lot of my weight really fast and it was good weight. It was all fat weight and uh, I was able to maintain muscle mass still. So yeah. it all worked out for me. You thought you were too heavy last year? I thought I was too, really? yeah. So moving on the court, I felt a little slower, but you know, right now after losing all this weight, I feel a lot more explosive, agile. So yeah. it's starting to play the part with what I needed to do with what the, what the feedback was coming back is. All right. All right. Uh, the other question everybody had was, even when you did come back and got out of the draft, there was the graduate transfer option. And you saw guys like Matt Mooney go from yeah. USD to Texas Tech. You know, Crandall just went from uh, University of North Dakota to Gonzaga. Yeah. Made a big splash and you could have done the same thing. Why didn't you? Yeah, it was a, it was, it was a kind of a difficult time, you know, into the school year got over and uh, next thing you know on social media, I think more than anything else, all these teams and these schools were hitting me up or their fan base was anyways, just yeah. trying to reach out to me and establish some sort of contact. But, um, you know, for me, it was easy decision to come back here and, and stick with what I've, what I've known and, and uh, just kind of go off what I've created here so far. Right. And you make it sound like an easy decision, but that could not have been an easy decision because, like you said, you had people banging on you, there, and you don't have to name names, but there were, had to be some big programs that you could have been in contact with. As yep, a yep. Um, you know, I, for me, having Coach Otts here, great teammates, great community, um, I can accomplish everything that, I've, that I want to do and my dreams from here. So for me, it was, it was the right decision. All right, 2,232 points currently, and we'll talk about uh, the possibility of 3,000 points. When we come back, though, we're going to show you some of these pictures <laughs> and uh, get some comments on these when we come back with Mike Dom. Welcome back to Bench Warmers with Mike Dom from South Dakota State, and he is chasing, will be chasing 3,000 points this year with the Jackrabbits, but from Kimball, Nebraska High School. And we're going to show you some of these photos. Walk down memory lane a little bit. You just tell us what you see here and what what this is? Um, well, I see a young 
Justin Bieber haircut. Exactly. Sophomore year, Mike Dom. Is that why your hair was like that because of Bieber? He was a sensation at the time, and, I, and maybe I thought to myself that I could get some vocals and start singing a little bit too, but <laughs> I don't think that was the path for me. The hair is glorious though. All right, what about this one? This one, I see just a straight up chubby farm kid. Um, <laughs> that was what year of high school? This was my junior year of okay. high school, so All right. big chubby cheeks, but I got that rebound, so there was no one getting that, that was one. That's a good board. Me. All right, and then this uh, still at Kimball. Yep, I think this was my this was my junior year too. Right after this sure. is in the state tournament. Yep, I feel like th there's a difference in those pictures. Maybe I lost a little weight, but I got the knee brace. That was all style back in the day. Every photo you can find is you handling the ball. I don't know if you were. I, I, I my mom had me doing the ball handling drill since I was young. So all right, this is you surrounded by some. I think this is from the state tournament. It is the left-handed jump shot. Yep. You've always kind of had that. Ability around the rim to switch hands and do things. I think you fouled out of this game in the third quarter. I did. Anyway. It was. It was. It was. I remember this game. It was Boone Central. It was in the state tournament. It was Bob Devaney. First time I ever played in there. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I suck this game. <laughs> I fouled out. You're like you said, I fouled out in the third quarter. And uh, I just remember thinking to myself, that was not very good. All right. <laughs> what is this? Have you seen this? I've never seen this before. That this is, is a t a, apparently is a t shirt. If you someone find wears this t shirt, it with this picture on it and finds me, I would, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. <laughs> okay, possibly that'll happen. All right, what's this? Ah, uh, last year, Summit League, uh, this is a great photo. I mean, this, this type of stuff just brings back memories. It gives me motivation to work for it next year and uh, this upcoming year for what I want to accomplish. Yeah, so. that's, that's what it's all about right yep. there is winning that Summit League tournament. All right, these are from uh, the NCAA tournament, three okay. times now, what, what is this one? Ah, man, this is year number one in the NCAA tournament. We should have won this game, too. I'm not bitter about it. Maryland gotta, wins 79-74 yep. was the final. You had 16 points. Yeah, I got to move on from that game. But this, this, was, this was a good one. I actually look like I have a decent vertical in this, this picture. Was, uh, so so I'm, I'm not mad about that. That got some serious oohs and ahs oh, yeah. in that game. All right, this one. Ooh, two years ago against Gonzaga, big Karnowski. I remember this picture because I, I remember posting it on one of my social media pages and everyone was like, you look like a baby, you look like a child next to this guy. And I really did. I mean, he was he was seven foot one and I was just a little measly six nine next to him. But I was battling. I know I was battling yeah. in that picture. And you guys got beat by 20 in that. You had 17 points, but that, that was... Man, that game was rough Maybe too. a tournament game to yeah. forget. And, and then last year. God, last year. Well, this year, actually. This was March. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this this past season. Um, I mean, this one's tough for me just, just because, I mean, this picture out of all of them probably motivates me the most just because, I mean, we, we were so close and it just came down to the last last couple critical plays and and mistakes. But, you know, it's just something to, to look at, keep in the back of your mind and use it as motivation to uh, propel you into next season. Ohio State won at 81-73. You guys were tied with a couple of minutes left. 27 points in that game. This is Kata Bates Diop from Ohio State, just drafted by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And he's killing it right now. And Summer he's, League. He's playing well, is he? But that, well. doesn't that give you even more motivation? No question. You know, being able to see guys like that, knowing that I played against them and knowing that I competed with them gives me all the more motivation going into this season, knowing that I can compete at such a high level with these guys. So All right, a couple more photos coming later. We're gonna talk about the numbers for Mike Don when we come back though. Probably gonna join a very exclusive group. Uh, and scoring in NCAA basketball. We'll talk about that with Mike when we come back. Welcome back to Bench Warmers here at Brookings High School with Mike Dom from South Dakota State. Currently at 2,232 points in his career with the Jackrabbits. Nate Walters is 131 points ahead. Do, had you known who Walters was? Has he been around? I mean, do you guys know each other? Or not? Yeah, um, I, I got the chance to meet him my freshman year when uh, Coach Cooley was working him out one day. So that was my first time I got to meet him. And uh, we've gotten to know each other over social media. Obviously, he's been overseas and on the mm -hmm. road so much. So I've gotten the opportunity to talk to him and, and get to know him over the years. Okay. All right, 132 points to catch Walters. I uh, need 273 points this coming season for a new Summit League record which is going to happen. 404 points to pass Steph Curry on the all-time NCAA scoring list. Are you aware of any of these numbers? You need 619 to pass Larry Bird this year, which could happen. This is some heady stuff, isn't it, man? I know you try not to think about it. Yeah, but. it really is. Um, you know, for me, it comes down to just focusing on the controllables for me, things I can control. Yeah. Um, 
So when I look at things like this, I, I try to put it in the back of my mind and not worry about it and just focus on helping my team win the next game. That's a great answer. That's a very mature answer. But uh, all right, here's, here's what you need to get 3,000. If you guys play 35 games again like you did last year and average 22 a game, that's 770 points that puts you at 3,002. And there are only eight guys right now ever that have scored 3,000 points in their NCAA career. Larry Bird, J.J. Redick did it a couple years ago. Uh, Jimmer Fredette at BYU, people remember those kind of names. But do you know who the all-time leader is? Pete Maravich. Pistol Pete's at 3,600. He averaged 44 points a game. He would have averaged even more if they would have had a three-point line at back L then You're too. right. So Doug McDermott from Creighton is number five. But 3,000 points, um, you would be just the ninth guy all-time. And so we're going to see what happens this year. But you guys have got some uh, some stuff coming back as well. David yep. Jenkins Jr., yep. as a freshman last year, was a great addition, 16 points a game. You got some other guys that redshirted last year that are going to add something this year. There's a kid named Owen King uh, from Minnesota that's going to be a true freshman that's probably going to play a little bit. You're going to have a lot of support. Yep. So, like you said, you, you really can't worry about scoring, but it's, it's going to come, isn't it? For me, um, you know, like I said earlier, it, it'll come, uh, I believe, but like I said, I just need to focus on the things that I can control, you know, working hard each day, boosting my teammates each day, and I feel like, you know, the more that I just go out and, and play for those guys, the more that they're going to go out and play for me, and, uh, and the things will just come. So as I just keep working and keep working, I know things will fall into place like they're supposed to. All right, and the vegan diet is going to go all the way through the year? How, uh, does that end at some I, point? I would say right now I'm on a, I'm on a uh, maybe. I, I haven't had a cheeseburger or pizza in a long time and I'm craving some. So I would say the vegan diet's a loose term right now. I'd still eat some right. lean chicken breast, maybe some scrambled eggs. So we'll, we'll see how long I can keep that up. But but it's working, right? It, it's working right now. Yeah, I'm very happy with the results that I've, I've seen and everything. All right, one more picture to say goodbye. <laughs> Telly, Telly's not going to be, well, he's going to be around as he's, a, he's gonna be around. assistant coach this yep. year. I mean, it's funny, we, we can't take selfies like this anymore because we won't be playing together. So he'll be off with the coaching staff doing the, doing the grown up adult old man thing. And <laughs> yeah, I, right. I have to tease him all the time about it just because I know he's like, he's like, man, I'm in the real world now. He's like, I actually have a job. And I'm like, I'm still just having fun. I'm playing basketball. And he's like, I wish I could go back right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's going to be a great year. Right. Stay healthy, buddy. We'll see you. Thank you so Bruce much. Winter, Mike Dom uh, from South Dakota State. Coming up next here on Bench Warmers, Angela Brown, the Avera Health trainer here at Brookings High School. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers here to wrap it up at Brookings High School and joined by Angela Brown with Avera Health. She is the head athletic trainer here at Brookings High School. And where you're from Raymond, South Dakota, right? I am. Where is Raymond? Uh, it's up by Clark. It's in Clark County. Okay. So uh, it's about 90 miles away from Brookings. All right. And you are an SDSU grad? Yes. And worked at SDSU before you came here yes. to Brookings High School. Is that right? Yes. You were a teacher there? What did you teach? Mm -hmm. Yep. I taught in the athletic training education program. So I taught the athletic trainers to be uh, in our field okay. for two years before starting at Brookings High School. All right. And now here at Brookings High School, you've been the athletic trainer for eight years, you said. Yes. And I saw where you were thinking about maybe going on and furthering your education. OT, PT, or whatever, but you kind of fell in love with this position, is that yes. right? Yes, yep, yep. You know, I, I originally thought athletic training was going to be a stepping stone into physical therapy, but what I didn't know is that I would actually fall in love with just the field of athletic training yeah. and be just as content to be in this field. What about it? Why Why did you fall in love with it? Uh, it's fun. It's working with high school athletes, uh, and it's, it's from the point of preventing injuries to helping understand what injury is going on for them, working with physicians and other healthcare providers and helping them get better and then seeing them go back to the yeah. things that they want to do, playing their sport and being just as successful as they were before the injury. And you, you like to add a personal touch, right? You, can, yeah. you have to get to know the football player, the volleyball player or yeah. whoever and kind of know their history and know mm -hmm. a little bit of their psychology as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's the fun part is you get to know the people and see them kind of in a different piece, I think, than even uh, teachers in school and yeah. even the other healthcare providers where you have a very limited time. We get to see them in and out every mm -hmm. day and get to know what's important to them and how, what they want to do with their lives. And I think we also have an influence in that part of them too. Of, you know, if you were me, what would you do with your career? And you can kind of say, uh, well, right. if you like this kind of thing, you know, maybe see some different fields for 
you know, whether it be healthcare, or athletic training, yeah. or anything else. Very cool. All right. And the other coaches refer to you, I think, as, as kind of another coach. And you're not, you're not a coach, but they, they consider you that way. That's kind of an honor, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It is an honor um, because they do. We, we kind of have a neat little niche in our field because we, yeah, we're seen as an, another coach by our other coaches, but we're also seen as, uh, as kind of sometimes, I think, a, another uh, role model for a lot mm -hmm. of the athletes. Uh, and then we're also seen as kind of someone else um, that parents can refer to. We're seen as a healthcare provider. So, yeah, we kind of play a lot of different roles. And it's and it's not doctor either, but people think of you yeah. as a doctor. Is that kind of a fine line where you have to kind of walk that or how does that work? You know, I, I, I think it's more so kind of a piece of, uh, I think it's out of respect, but I usually do to say, you know what, I'm not a doctor, but thank you. But it, it, it does show how much knowledge we do have in the field of yeah. medicine. Yeah. Uh, and it's very specific to sports medicine. So we can usually be able to take the doctor's language and communicate it with the athletes and parents and then take the athletes and parents language and communicate it to the doctors. All right, and it's year round as well. You're here in the summer working yes. with athletes right now. What's going on yep. right now? Yep, uh, we have strength and conditioning going on in the mornings uh, and then the summer camps going on as well. So yeah, we're, we're here to be um, kind of those touch points during the summer. Obviously our busiest season though is during the school year. Yeah. And we have, speaking of strength and conditioning, there's a new strength and conditioning coach here at Brookings High School yes. that you're very familiar with. I right? am very familiar with, yep. Uh, he happens to be my husband as well. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited. We're, uh, we've are we always kind of went about it as like kind of Team Brown. So I think it's kind of fun that, yeah, we get to use that piece very also cool. here at Brookings High School. All right, appreciate it very much. Angela Brown with Avera Sports. And uh, that's gonna do it this week on Benchwarmers. Thanks to Lee Schmidt, thanks to Mike Don. We will see you in Pier next week on Benchwarmers.